Hi, and welcome back to Let's Play EG. Today, we're going to violently confront General Tor.
So this is the Kamado General Tour. And just listen to that music. Oh, and look at that slowdown. And as you'll see right here from this message, Tor, we, we've talked before about the slowdown issue in this game, and Tor is one of the biggest offenders of it. So much so that Daniel Raymond put a failsafe into the game to reduce the game quality if there's too much slowdown on this boss. Now, Tor has a ton of attacks, more than any other boss in the game. Fitting. But his most important one is right here the charge ball. It's your main source of damage against it. And as you saw, I reflected back. But what if I didn't reflect it back? Well, then the balls start circular, circulating Tor right there. And he gets his strongest moves at three balls. Right here's the Nano Storm. And, well, I'll let it explain itself. Remember that log from a while back that talked about a uh, handheld phantom hammer? Yeah, I think we found out who has it. Anyway, back to talking about Tor. The reason why he's so graphic intensive is that he's 10 bones and 270 vertices over 35 shapes and circles. All with a custom written program to determine how they move and how they react to what's going on. To put it lightly, it can put quite the strain on your computer. Now, all of Tor's attacks can be broken up in groups. Level 1, level 3, level, level 1, level 2, and level 3. Tor's typical pattern is to fire a level 1 attack, then a level 2 attack. He does this three times, then he fires a charge ball. Then he'll fly into the background and fire off a level 3 attack. The level 1 attacks are a rage bomb, which is that one that he shoots out and explodes and splinters off into little bombs. The Tyrian Claw. Ty Tyrian? Tyrian. And that's the one that's the little purple spinny things that kind of go left or right, left or down, matter on how they feel like it. There's the Ripper, which I think the Ripper is the, uh, the one that shoots down and makes a little wavelength on the ground. There's the Heavy Stomp, which I'm pretty sure is just him stomping on the ground. For the level 2 attacks, we have the Arc Devastator, which is that kind of triple, or six shot, uh, MPF Devastator that he does. There's the Ultra Shotgun, which is when the, uh, the the targeters appear on the screen and he shoots again and they explode. There's the Zika Burst, which is I'm pretty sure that explosions that are coming out of the ground at times. And Fractal Rockets, which are the rockets that kind of go out and split off. His level 3 attacks are the Death Hail, which are the vertical columns that gives you the targeters on the bottom and you can move left and right. There's Eruption, which is when he shoots the ground and it explodes upwards. And the Mega Missiles, which are the ones that are left. The, the four missiles that come out, you have to move around the screen to avoid them. Also, as we've gone over, he has the Charge Ball, the Nano Storm, and a Phantom Hammer. On normal difficulty, Tor has 900 health. That's a lot. It just gets worse because on hard, he has 1050. And on Extreme and Ultimortal, he has 1200 a lot of health to beat down. Overall, the typical strategy I would give you for fighting Tor is to switch to some of your stronger weapons, such as the Velocitor or the MPFB Devastator, and fire him off during the first two bouts of his pattern. You know, he does the one, the level one, level two. To do, it, do it during the first level 1, level 2 combo. First two. After the second one, immediately switch to Resonance Reflector. 
so that you can bounce back the charge ball. You really don't want to let him get too many of those charge balls flying around. You'll probably lower him below the Phantom Hammer. There's a lot of people I've talked to that don't even know that the Phantom Hammer exists because in order for him to use the Phantom Hammer, he has to be above two quarters of his health. Or three quarters. If he's three quarters or below, he'll always use the Nano Storm. So, generally, you don't have to worry about the Phantom Hammer too much. Also, the, the Charge Balls are just your main source of damage. However, if you miss them, don't worry because you can always just counter the ones that are spinning around them. Tor really isn't too hard to deal with once you realize how to avoid all the different attacks. The worst you'll get is sometimes he'll combine two attacks together that just make it impossible to dodge. The interesting thing is all of his attacks actually level up as the fight goes on. Uh, the level 1 and level 2 will level up to 5, to a, like a level 5, and the level 3 attacks will level up to a level 3, and they just become more complex as that happens. Now, there is one more thing I want to show off. Uh, it's just the things I do for 100%. Just showing off every little secret in the game. Just goes to show my hate of the banana gun. Oh man, what's going to happen? My banana or his charge ball? He had a banana on his nose. Oh my god. So that was General Tor. Now, enjoy the ending. I'll see you afterwards.
Did did the music cut out or fade out? Music isn't supposed to end this early. Well, this gives us time to talk. So let's talk about the ending a little bit. We know that EG survived, of course, and it seems like humanity survived, but we're not really told what happens to EG. EG is kind of a broken human now. She's had way more me me bleh, mental trauma than I think most people could handle. And she's kind of like a superhuman, so I really don't know what the world has in store for EG at this point. It's kind of a kind of a somber idea, isn't it? Well, hopefully the pacifist ending turns out better for her. And this is the total screen. I killed a ton of people and took a ton of damage, and still was not able to get that one unlock for cracks. I kind of like this screen. It let you know, hey, this is how you did. This is pretty good. Also, the time is pretty nice. So that's it for the violent run. I'll see you guys over in Pacifist Run, Sector X.